<laughs> oh, this is a big one. G'day and welcome to Black Opal Direct. My name's Justin. Well, today we're working on something monstrous. This is a 959 carat big chunk of opal. It's seam opal from Lightning Ridge. And um, I can imagine that there would have been more that came with this, but this was the only bit that I could get. Now it has a nice color bar going right through it, um, or almost right through it. So I'm looking at a quite a big stone. So this side here, I think he's got no color, but the rest has. So we've got chances of like a, you know, two, three, 400 carat stone, which uh, could be quite amazing. Now, there is a couple of little things about it that is possibly, and it's very small possibility, that it could go black with this little tiny bit of black here, of potch. Now, my experience is telling me that that potch won't touch the color. So I'm doubting that it will go black. I could be wrong, but I'm doubting it very much. So the first thing we need to do is get on the wheel and clean up the edges to, to make sure where that color bar goes. And let's get a flashlight into the color bar and see if we can actually see uh, what's going on inside and whether that color bar is clean. I think it's clean. It should be clean. Usually on big pieces like this, it should be clean of sand, but there may be potch. You just don't know. So let's get on the wheel and have a crack. While the 250 grit is a good wheel for roughing opal out, I think this piece is way too big for the grit. So I'm going to have to make some changes and go to another wheel or do something else. So I think what we've got to do is, um, I think we need to slice, because it's going to take too long to grind that away. We need to slice off the bits that have no watch on and no color and work our way in. So I think the slicer would be much faster than um, grinding on the wheel. You may find a few sparks as I'm slicing through here and the reason is that I'm just being too impatient. I'm pushing too hard which has made me lose about 50% of the diamonds on this blade. So you really need to take it slowly, use lots of water and your blade will last much longer. Because there's so much rough I might move over to the 90 grit wheel to make it easier for me. To the 90 grit, which is the roughest wheel I have. The 90 grit is so rough, I wouldn't recommend it for smaller stones. It's so rough, it throws shards up into your eyes. So make sure you wear protection and keep your mouth closed, otherwise you'll get grit in your teeth. This is one of those pieces that's just going to take a long time to cut. Ahem, <clears throat> excuse me, you're not meant to be there. All jokes aside, I do take this business seriously most of the time. Okay, time to concentrate. All right, well I reckon um, I'm ready to take its top off. It's gonna be a, a big face and the hope is that we don't get um, too much potch in the color because there is um, like speckles of potch in that color. And that's a bit of a worry when it comes to um, having a clean face. And that's the ultimate goal is to have a clean face. So I'd love that, but um, we may not get it. So anyway, we're going in.
Without really knowing where this opal comes from or what mine, you don't really know how it's going to cut until you cut it open. But if I knew where it came from exactly, I'd have a better idea. There we go, the colour's just starting to come through there. Well, I'll tell you one thing, I do like the pattern. Not sure about the pot yet, but I do like the pattern. Come on. At this point, I'm starting to get worried because I don't see that color bar cleaning up and uh, it's getting thinner, much thinner. It's coming through a little bit there. Oh, let's please be better than this. Doesn't look amazing. Did I mention I paid four thousand for this piece? All right. Well, we might take it to the finer wheel now. We've got down to the colour, and there is some potch still on the top, and I need to take it out. So. I need to take it out really carefully so we don't lose it. And this wheel's just too rough for that. This is it, it's crunch time. Am I gonna get what I need out of this stone? It's still really hard to tell whether this colour bar is going to be coming clean. You can see potch in it, and I don't know if it's coming out. Down below. So it's, me, it's telling me that there is still some potch on the top that needs to come out. Far out, I'm cutting it fine this time. I'm trying to get that last bit of sand out without losing that colour. It's becoming a challenge. I'm just not sure if it's going to come out. That was a tough one but I think we came through. It looks like it's mostly clean. I can't believe it. It's fantastic. What to do? What to do? So we're gonna shape it up just in a nice free form and we're gonna go from there. I think with a piece like this, you just really should just shape it into a nice specimen. It's too big for an oval. I mean, who's gonna put it in a pendant? I mean, this is massive. And, you know, so specimens are the go, and pretty much just make it a pleasing shape. I can always cut it to an oval later. All right, so I think we're, we're done there. Just pretty pleasing shape. Smoothened out the back. There's a little bit of purple on the back, which is cool, so, but I reckon now we do the fine cutting. There we go here. Back on this wheel again. Large pieces like this can be really challenging. I mean, 
it's a massive piece. You're spending a lot of money on it. And for that color bar to actually come out really nice is stressful. It's really risky because you're not talking about some small piece. You're talking about a piece that is substantial in size, has the potential to make something massive and beautiful, but you're still not sure until you've opened it up. And all it takes is for one piece of potch or sand in the middle of the color bar to ruin everything. And that's why it helps to know where it comes from to know how it cuts. Before I keep going, I just wanted to talk to you about treated opals and, and doublets and triplets and smoked Ethiopian opal and all that sort of stuff and why I don't actually work with it or deal with it or sell it to anybody. And the reason is because every single week I get asked by people, is my opal a natural opal from Australia? Because that's what I was sold thinking it was. And a lot of the time I have to tell people, I'm really sorry, but that's a treated Andamuka opal. It's not actually totally natural. Um, so, or it's been smoked and it's Ethiopian and it's not actually a black opal. Um, or that a opal in their piece of jewellery is an act actually a doublet and not, um, not a natural solid opal. So I see a lot of disappointment in people's eyes when or in their words when I have to tell them what they have and so that's why I don't want to be any part of making doublets or treating opal because it just can eventually end up in the hands of somebody who thinks they have something different or something better so that's why I don't I choose not to be a part of that let me know in the comments what you think of treated gems and don't forget to subscribe. Polishing a piece of opal of this size really is time consuming. It takes a long time to get every single surface nice and shiny. But I do stress you must take your time because you will find cutting marks if you rush these kind of things. Big flat surfaces take longer to polish than anything. And you'd be surprised. You'd think that something this large would be quite valuable and from the price I paid for it to what it's worth now is not a lot of difference. There is a profit, but there is not a major profit in something like this. It's more of a fun stone, a specimen, something to collect, and a really nice reminder of Lightning Ridge Seam Opal. This gem ended up being around about 322 carats. Now it's really difficult to put a price per carat on a stone like this. With so much potch on the back, it's very difficult to do and you shouldn't actually do it. You really need to make a piece price for the whole stone. And my price, I think, is around about the $6,000. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.